Welcome to Looping Part 2. In this segment, we examine two types of loops, one which is based on the do and the loop statements, and the second which is based on the while and the when statements. So we'll start with the blank slate and examine the do loop by declaring an integer i, which we're simply going to use as a counter. We'll start off by doing a loop which is very much like the for loop. And we'll do do i equals i plus 1 loop until i equals 10. So we can monitor what's going on inside the loop. We will print out the value of i and let's see what we get. One through ten, just as we did with the for next loop that was in the previous lesson. But there's a difference here. Let's see what we get when we print out the value of i. Interesting. We exit the do loop and the value is 10. Now, if you remember the for next loop, which had a next statement down here, we ended up with a value of 11. Let's compare. Also, I'm going to add clear text output at the top of this for the canvas one, which is this one, so that every time we run, we get a new sheet to write on. And now I'm going to compare this with the corresponding for loop. Okay, what do you expect? Well, if you remember the last lesson, we expect 11 and we get 11 with the for next loop, but with the do loop, we end up with a value of 10, which was the last value inside the loop. This is one reason programmers often favor the use of the do loop. It behaves in a much more obvious way because you're controlling everything. The next statement is for some an annoying statement because it, it's doing two things and it does them in a specific order which is not intuitively obvious. Okay, uh, so that is the do loop. Let's examine other ways of doing the do loop. We have loop until but we could, for example, do, do until i equals 10. And then we can copy essentially the same thing we had before, except remove the until from the end part. And now we will go to i. Let's go to 5 this time and 5 in the other one and compare them and see what we get. Well, that was my mistake, because we need to start i out at 0 each time. So there is more to do with the do loop. You have to initialize your variable. You have to clearly indicate what the step size is, and 
uh, you have to assign where you're going to do the checking. In a for next loop, it's a little bit easier in the sense that you know the checking is only done at the next statement, and it also takes care of incrementing. So let's compare these two again. So they both behave identically, which should tell us something. The statement that is attached to the do statement until appears to be checked at that statement, but it doesn't matter because if it is checked and found to be uh, equal to the condition, it will skip this entire segment and exit to the next statement. So even though the loop until statement exits to the next statement, the do until statement also exits the loop at the next statement following the loop. So it's almost as if it doesn't matter where you put that conditional, and indeed that's the case. And for that reason, I recommend you only use this approach. You have your conditional attached to the loop statement, and uh, it is probably best that you always do it this way unless there's some particular reason you need to check uh, under the do statement. And one case would be if you have a conditional where you do not want to do the loop at all, then uh, you would need to have that conditional at the top and check for it. There are many cases when that would be the case. Okay, now we don't need to have integers inside our do loop. We can check for something else. So let's set up our do loop now simply using a boolean. Let's set our boolean to true whenever a random number is greater than 0 0.8. Now, if you recall, RND generates a random number, and uh, it generates a random number between 0 and 1, anywhere in between. And we're going to check RAND equals 0 0.8, and if so, then Q equals true, loop until Q, and for the entertainment value of it, let's use a counter to see how many times we go through this loop until this RAND uh, responds as true. Okay, so i equals i plus 1. Can't seem to spell today. Okay, uh, so now let's see how many times it runs. Four cycles, but because we're using a random number, sometimes it's going to be more or less. Cool. Okay. I like that. Now, what I particularly like about the do loop statement is that it never requires that you have a counter at all, as in this particular case. And people who do programming in which you want a program to continue running until some event will use it. And for that reason, it's often called the game loop. That is, it's a loop that continues until the gamer decides he's done or loses. And, uh, and for that reason, the do loop is often just called the game loop. I, don't re I do not recommend that. Uh, that is slang, but it is also 
true. So let's see what other conditions we can have. Well, in the case of Mass Scripter, you can stop your loop when somebody presses the stop button. So let me see what we get when we run this. And we'll just let it run and then press the stop button. Well, we just got 4,444 cycles. I bet I can't do that again. Let's try it again. Nope. Every time we press run and then stop, we're going to get a different number depending upon how long it takes for the loop to go. And uh, um, it actually what takes the time here is not the math. That takes almost no time, but every time you check for the stop button, it actually checks for the stop button, and that takes a fair amount of time because it actually has to exit the thread it is in and then come back uh, with an answer. Okay, so that is the do loop. Let's explore the while when loop. It is actually quite similar and uh, not very often used. It's a holdback from the early days of BASIC, where the goal was to make every statement make sense grammatically. So while i is less than 5, i equals i plus 5, when, and we'll print out the value of i at the end, and what we'll find, of course, is five. This is a useful statement, and if you like it, you're welcome to use it. I don't necessarily recommend it. It is old school and uh, a little bit out of date, but it is available to you. And uh, it has almost the same properties as the do loop, but uh, is more grammatically sensical, if you wish. But I don't particularly like it, but you should know it's available. Okay, that's it for the do loop and the while when loop. Till next time, thank you.